So hello everyone, uh, and welcome to the Silverline Extension Alternatives Analysis Public Meeting. My name is Reagan Cecchio, and I'm gonna be the moderator for this evening. I would like to remind everyone for the rules for participating, as well as remind everyone that this meeting is being recorded. It is also being streamed on the City of Everett's Facebook page. While we wish we were able to do this meeting in person, we're hoping that we have designed an online public meeting that will be interactive and provide an opportunity for us to have a conversation together. Before we can begin that conversation, I want to review a few technical aspects of the Zoom platform. Next slide. And next slide again. So we have an interpreter who is translating the meeting tonight into Spanish. If you require this service, please click the interpretation button on your screen, the globe icon, and select which language you wish to hear. I will also note that Gabriella, our interpreter, has posted in the chat. At this moment, I will ask all English speakers to please select English as their chosen language. This will allow you to hear translated non-English comments um, during Q&A and actually hear all of our speakers during the meeting. I will say that if you have any issues hearing speakers tonight, uh, please be sure that you have selected the English language uh, globe icon if you are an English speaker. Next slide. You can view closed captions by clicking the closed captions feature and selecting from the options shown. Show subtitle will display a caption at the bottom of the screen. View full transcript will display the meeting's audio transcription in a window to the right. Next slide. If you are, uh, all attendees are going to be muted and their videos turned off during the presentation to prevent excessive background noise. Videos and the mute button will be available during the small group discussion portion of the program. Next slide. If you're viewing this presentation on a computer, toggle speaker view to see the presentation more prominently. If you are on a smartphone, you can swipe to change views. Next slide. You may use the chat button during the meeting to submit a typed question or comment at any point. We are going to be monitoring the chat during the presentation, but ask that you hold substantive comments and questions for the breakout discussions that we will be having later. If you have a technical problem, please share your issue in the chat um, at any point during the meeting and we will respond as quickly as possible. I'll note that all project team staff members are listed with that next to their name in the participant list. A reminder to everyone that the chat is visible to all and we encourage you to keep any comments in it respectful to other attendees. The chat is also being broadcast on the uh, Facebook page as well. Um, I'd like to introduce Doug Johnson now from MassDOT, who will provide more detail about the stu uh, study. Next slide. Thank you, Reagan. Hi, everyone. My name is Doug Johnson. I am the MassDOT project manager for the Silverline Extension Alternatives Analysis. I am joined tonight by several of my colleagues from MassDOT, as well as folks from the MBTA and our consultant team, including Reagan Cecchio, uh, who's helping with facilitating this meeting. The purpose of tonight's meeting is to talk about the purpose and need of the Silverline Extension Alternatives Analysis and seek your input on the potential alignments that we will consider through this process. Uh, we'll start by presenting on the project purpose, goals, and objectives, um, briefly talk about existing conditions, and then we'll talk about potential concepts that we'll analyze as part of this process. Uh, that will take about 45 minutes, and then we will separate into breakout rooms where we will um, give you the opportunity to talk to project team members about different parts of the study area um, and different alignments that we may consider. Um, after about a half an hour of discussion in those groups, we'll come back uh, to the main lobby where we'll do Q&A for any unanswered questions. Um, then we'll talk about next steps and adjourn. Next slide, please. So we'll start with a project overview, but before I do, um, if there are any elected officials in attendance tonight, uh, we ask that you please type your name into the chat so that we can recognize your attendance here. Um, and of course, at the end, when we go to questions and answers, um, if you'd like to speak, we'll give you the opportunity to do so before we open it up to the general public. Um, 
So please go ahead and, and type your name into the chat um, if you're here. And but also before I get into project overview, we actually have a couple polls set up that we'd ask that everyone in attendance participate in so we can see you know, who's here, um, what the breakdown is of, of where folks live and their interest in the project. So I'll ask Reagan to bring up the first poll. So the first poll asks, what city do you live in? Your options are Boston, Cambridge, Chelsea, Everett, Somerville, or other. Um, and sorry, I'm gonna try not to speak too quickly for the sake of our closed captioner and our Spanish interpreter. Um, the cities listed on this um, are part of our study area and then other is cities that are outside of our study area. We just wanna get a general sense of who's here, who's participating, um, and see really where our outreach was effective um, and where it was lacking and where we may need to do additional outreach to communities. So we'll leave this open for a couple more seconds. It looks like most folks have participated. And then thank you to elected officials and municipal staff for um, letting us know of your, your presence and affiliation in the chat. Uh, Reagan, you can go ahead and close the poll and you'll all be able to see the results. Uh, you can see that we have about 13 people from Somerville, 12 from Cambridge, um, 12 from outside of our study area. And there's about 75 folks in the meeting right now, and we expect uh, many more to, to join as well as the meeting gets underway. Uh, Reagan, you can stop sharing the results and launch the second poll, please. So the second question asks, um, which answer below best describes you? Select all that apply. And the options are resident, transit rider, business owner or employer, elected official, advocate, or other. Um, please feel free to select any of the designations that you feel represent you. Uh, we just wanna get an idea of what folks' interest in the study is um, and their level of participation. We'll leave this open for a little while so that most folks can answer. All right, I think with that, we can close polling. So the majority of the folks um, who have just been in the poll identified themselves as transit riders. Um, we have a lot of folks who are residents of our study area, uh, several advocates, and then a few business owners or employers, and of course, uh, some of our elected officials. Uh, you can stop sharing results, Reagan. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, thank you everyone for, for participating in that. That gives us a, a good idea of who we're reaching out to and where we may need to um, do a little bit more work. For those who still see the poll results on your screen, if you click the, the X in the corner, it will close out that window. So now we'll get into the project overview. Uh, essentially, what is this project and why are we doing it? Next slide. The purpose of the Silverline Extension Alternatives Analysis is to assess the feasibility, utility, and cost of various alignment and service frequency options of an extension of the Silverline, providing high quality transit from Chelsea through Everett and onto Somerville, Cambridge, and our Boston. Um, I know that's a really long <laughs> statement. Essentially, there have been many studies in the past that have recommended doing something with the Silver Line in um, Chelsea and Everett, something more than, than what is already there, um, potentially extending it. There's been different ideas for different routes. The purpose of this study is really to figure out exactly what could be done, to look at all of the different alternatives, um, evaluate them against each other, and see really what is feasible um, and what would provide the most benefit. So that's why this study is called an alternatives analysis. Really, that's at the heart of what we're doing. Uh, next slide, please. The project need is really taken from the MBTA Focus 40 plan, which is the long-term investment plan for the MBTA. That plan listed extending Silverline service from Chelsea into Everett as a long-term goal and listed out part of the reason why that that would be necessary um, for the benefit that it would provide, I should say. So our main objective is to look at adding 
transit service capacity and connectivity that will knit together Chelsea and Everett with nearby communities that are not currently well connected with high quality transit. So both Chelsea and Everett are um, really dense communities in the urban core, but they're not served by transit as well as some of the other communities in the core. We'll talk more about that in our existing conditions slides as well. Next slide. Um, so as I mentioned, or started to get into, the existing transit service um, in the area is not competitive with driving for many types of trips being made um, to and from Chelsea and Everett and the surrounding communities. Uh, next. But despite the lack of competitiveness, bus ridership in Chelsea and Everett has actually remained really high during the pandemic. The bus routes that serve these communities have retained some of the highest ridership within the system. Next slide. Chelsea, Everett, Simbril, and Cambridge are all experiencing rapid growth in housing and employment in um, areas that are not currently well served by transit. A great example of this is the commercial triangle in Everett, which is experiencing a lot of growth in housing and employment as many of the industrial parcels are converted over to mixed use housing. Um, unfortunately, that area is not currently well served by transit. Um, and we are going to be looking at what changes to transit service, including things like potentially extending the Silver Line, um, could do for areas like that. Next slide. There are also a lot of existing transit services and connections in Chelsea and Everett um, to nearby communities that could be leveraged um, and improved to make a more high quality cohesive network. So. While the primary focus of this study is looking at the Silver Line and what could potentially be done with that, it's very likely that there will be um, many improvements identified by this study that could be made to other transit service independently of the Silver Line. So as we come across identifying uh, those potential improvements, we'll share them with other efforts like the ongoing bus network redesign um, which is looking at the whole bus network and changes that, that could be made. Next slide. So on that note, um, it's important to recognize that there are many other studies happening um, in the Boston area and specifically within our study area that we need to coordinate with um, and that we are coordinating with to ensure that our methods and approaches are consistent um, and that the information that we gather is being shared with those other efforts. So the First and probably the most comprehensive is the bus transformation um, program, which includes bus network redesign. So bus transformation is an initiative by the MBTA to look at the entire bus system, um, all the bus routes, including things like uh, maintenance facilities and the fleet to figure out how that system can be transformed. Uh, we are obviously coordinating with that effort in our um, sort of nested within that, so to speak. Doug, I'm yes. so sorry to interrupt. Um, do you mind speaking a little bit more slowly for our interpreter and caption? Of course. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, I have a, a tendency to go through this quickly um, just because I've given this pre presentation a couple times. So in addition to um, bus transformation and network redesign, there is also the Wellington Circle Study, which is being conducted by MassDOT. Um, we are coordinating with that effort um, and we'll be incorporating any recommendations made by that study into our future conditions. The same is true for the Sweester Circle Study that's being conducted by the city of Everett. For those who don't know, Sweetser Circle is the traffic circle where Broadway goes over Route 16. It recently had bus lanes installed in it. There is also the McGrath Boulevard project, which is being undertaken by MassDOT. That's another project where any recommendations or ideas that come out of that about what the future conditions may look like will inform our study. And then lastly, as I mentioned, there have been lots of different bus lane projects within our study area that we are of course looking at and incorporating into our future conditions for the purposes of analyzing things like uh, transit travel time um, and how any of our alternatives may perform. Next slide. 
So this is our study area. You can see the dashed line around the outside edge um, and then the inside of the study area is a slightly darker gray than everywhere else. Um, this study area was developed to encompass likely study alignments that would meet the project purpose with a reasonable buffer to reflect uncertainty. So essentially, we looked at the past studies that preceded this one and all of the recommendations that they made um, for different silver line extensions or, or other transit services. And we drew a buffer around that uh, to encompass any potential alignments that we should be looking at. Um, you'll see that places like South Boston are not included in our study area, but I should note that our analysis is going to look at the SL3 in its entirety and any potential changes to the SL3 and the impact they would have on potential extensions. So the bounds of the study area are really to um, demarcate where potential extensions could go, like what the alignments would actually be. It, it doesn't um, bound the you know, travel analysis or incorporating um, things outside of our study area that would affect um, our assumptions about future travel patterns or what transit service will be like. Next slide. This is our project schedule. So as we mentioned at the beginning, this is the first public meeting for this process. We are sort of just getting underway. Um, we haven't gotten into our analysis too deeply. We're still at the in the early stages and we're having this meeting because we want to engage with you um, as early as possible and keep engaging with the public at every step of the process throughout the way. We didn't want to, you know, do an analysis and then come to you and say it's done um, without getting your input at the beginning because the input that you're going to give us on our goals, objectives, and our alignments are going to inform the rest of the process. So you can see at the top, engaging with the public and stakeholders is carried throughout the, the project. We will likely have our next public meeting um, sometime in late summer, early fall. Um, we also have convened a stakeholder working group that is meeting throughout the course of this project. And I'll talk about that in the next slide. So we've developed goals and objectives. We'll be going over those at the meeting tonight. Um, we've done an existing conditions analysis. And then we're, the, this stage is really about defining the alignments that an extension could take and then um, what the alternatives will be that we actually analyze. So after this meeting, we'll be getting into that alternatives analysis. And then um, we ex expect this process to conclude in spring of 2022 with a final report. Next slide. So I mentioned the stakeholder working group. We've convened a working group made up of staff from the municipalities within our study area, Chelsea, Everett, Somerville, Cambridge, and Boston. We also have staff from MAPC. And then we have the state representatives and senators whose districts overlap with the study area. We also asked mayors and city managers to nominate members of their communities to serve on the stakeholder working group. So we have um, those members on the group as well. That group has met twice so far um, and we presented the content for tonight's meeting to that group and got their input ahead of this meeting. Um, and they'll, we'll be meeting with them again, of course, uh, throughout the process. Next slide. We did a lot of public outreach for um, this public meeting. We really wanted to make sure that folks knew about it and had the opportunity to engage with it if they wanted to. Um, we just got a question in the chat. For, for questions that come into the chat, we will um, respond to them at the end of the meeting um, when we do Q&A. But I do just want to note that the list of members of the stakeholder working group will be posted on the project website. So thank you. That's a great question. Um, but as I was saying, for this public meeting, uh, we really wanted to make sure that folks knew about it, that we got as much input at the meeting as we could um, and really started off this process strong um, and you know, started those conversations with folks so that we'll, people will be engaged throughout the process. So 
We've been meeting for the last couple months with municipal staff. Um, I mentioned we had those two external stakeholder working group meetings. Uh, we also have a project website with information about those meetings and the recordings and the presentations from those work, stakeholder working group meetings that you can go view. The recording of this meeting will also be posted on the project website. Uh, that website addresses mbta.com slash slx. Uh, we also put out a press release and an email um, to our project listserv. You can go to the project website and sign up for email updates about this project if you don't already get them. And then, of course, we advertise this meeting um, in all of the sort of traditional standard venues, including the Everton Independent, Chelsea Record, Brazilian Times, um, in English, Spanish, and Portuguese, respectively. And we also ran radio ads in Spanish on Super 99.9 FM. Next slide. So goals and objectives. This is really the starting point for this process as the, the goals and objectives that we've identified really lay out the framework for conducting our alternatives analysis. Next slide. To develop our goals and objectives, we looked at all of the work that preceded this study, the studies that came before this um, and other relevant projects because those needed to inform our work. We needed to understand um, sort of where we came from, how we got here. So this timeline on the screen right here shows you what the past few years have looked like that have led up to this study happening. Um, you can really trace it back to 2012, 2013, when the Silver Line Gateway study got underway. Um, that study looked at creating the SL3 um, from South Station to Chelsea. Um, in 2015, that was an alternatives analysis like this one, I should say as well. Um, in 2015, construction of the Chelsea busway and implementation of the SL3 began. And then in 2016, the city of Everett in partnership with MassDOT released the Everett Transit Action Plan. Um, that plan recommended um, testing out bus lanes on Broadway and led to the pilot of an inbound um, peak hour bus lane on Broadway, which was, if I recall correctly, the first in the region. Um, that bus lane was later made permanent. And then a more recently, a northbound peak hour bus lane was also installed on Broadway, as well as bus lanes on Main Street and in Sweeser Circle, which I mentioned, which if I recall correctly, is the first traffic circle um, to receive bus lanes, uh, at least that I'm aware of, and certainly the first in the Boston area. So then in 2017, um, the city of Boston released Go Boston 2030. And actually each of the municipalities in our study area in the last couple of years have released their own um, either transportation plans or comprehensive plans or other simu similar um, planning effort, which we then drew, drew from, excuse me, to formulate our goals and objectives. So, and then at the end of 2020, this effort got underway and we expect it to um, conclude in 2022. Next slide. So as I mentioned, the goals and objectives provide the framework um, for evaluating different alternatives. Essentially, they become the, the benchmark or the, or the measure that we use to, to know if any extension or change to a transit service is in fact an improvement over the existing condition um, and if they're successful in doing what we would want them to do. So we have an evaluation framework that we've laid out and that really starts with the goals and objectives. Uh, we'll get into that in subsequent slides, but I should note that the goals and objectives need to be consistent with the goals and visions laid out by each of the municipalities within our study area. Um, obviously because we coordinate with all those municipalities, um, but perhaps most importantly, because the municipalities frequently own the roads or the right of way. So any implementation of transit priority um, or any kind of transit infrastructure requires um, the cooperation and coordination of any of our municipalities. So it's extremely important that 
we are essentially working in lockstep and hand in hand with them as we go through this process. And then of course, um, perhaps the most importantly, we want to just make sure that anything that we do is consistent with the visions that have been created by um, the different communities that we would serve. Next slide. So I, I essentially already went over this, but the goals and objectives are drawn from all of those past planning efforts that, that came before this. I think we can go to the next slide. So we've grouped all of our objectives into four main goal areas. They are expand mobility and access, advance equity, improve safety, and support climate change resilience and sustainability. And before we talk about the different objectives, I should note that no single alternative will achieve every single objective. We have a total of 20 objectives that fit within these four goal areas. No alternative is going to do, no one alternative is going to do the best job at achieving every single one of those objectives. We are evaluating alternatives against each other based on how they perform in fulfilling each of those objectives. So at the end of our alternatives analysis, we will have essentially a, a matrix or a, a spreadsheet really, where all of our objectives are on one axis and all of our alternatives are on the other axis. And we'll be able to compare them against each other to see you know, which ones do a better job of expanding mobility and access, which ones do a better job of advancing equity, et cetera. Um, and that will allow us to determine if any are worth um, recommending in our final report or not. So I think with that, we can go to the next slide. So under the first goal area of expand mobility and access, um, we have seven objectives. And as I mentioned, we will be evaluating each alternative based on how well they do any of these things. These are not statements to say, um, that all of these things will be done. We'll be evaluating whether alternatives accomplish these or not and to what extent they accomplish them. So for each one of these objectives, we actually have a quantifiable measure assigned to them. It's not shown on this slide, but we've developed um, those metrics for each one of these. And that's how we will evaluate our alternatives against each other. So uh, for the sake of the folks on this call and who may be on uh, phones dialing in, I will read these out loud uh, quickly, not too quickly. Um, so for the objectives under expand mobility and access are connect residents directly with jobs, services, and other daily activities, provide transit service like or similar to the subways or Silver Line to communities not currently served by subways or the Silver Line. Uh, provide transit service that takes a similar amount of time or is faster than driving. That's essentially how we um, are defining competitiveness with driving for the purposes of the study. Maximize new connections with other transit services. So some alternatives that we look at will do a good job of connecting with um, things like the orange line or the green line or the red line. Other alternatives may not, we want to evaluate alternatives against each other based on how well they do that. Um, provide transit connections to existing and planned affordable housing. Use investments to improve existing transit services in the study area. So we're gonna be looking um, for opportunities to um, leverage any potential future improvements uh, or an extension of the Silver Line um, to improve other bus services. Um, opportunities where that, that could be accomplished. And then provide transit service to areas with current or future growth in housing and jobs. Um, next slide, please. So the next goal area is advanced equity. And sort of just take a step back and look at this at a, at a higher level. The objectives under expand mobility and access are intended to look at our, our whole market, so to speak, for transit service. We want to look at the total population in the study area, jobs, um, where people are traveling to um, by all modes. And then for the um, advanced equity goal area, 
we are looking specifically at transit critical populations and how they get around and what their needs are so that we can make sure that any alternatives that we look at um, or anything that would ultimately be recommended in our final report um, would you know, benefit transit critical populations. We wanna see how this performs for sort of population at large and then how it performs specifically for the folks who have been taking transit throughout the pandemic, essential workers, folks who don't have access to personal automobiles um, and other folks who uh, based on demographics may be more dependent on transit than others. So the objectives under advanced equity are provide new transit service for people who already rely on transit to get around, uh, make sure people who are likely to rely on transit have transit that matches how much service they need and when. So that's looking at the travel patterns throughout the day of um, transit riders and seeing if an alternative um, is providing uh, frequent enough service or service early enough in the day or late enough at night or frequently enough in the middle of the day, for example, um, based on the existing travel patterns and, and what the demand or the need is. And then lastly, uh, make improvements to existing transit service used by people who are likely to rely on transit. So that's where we are, are focusing to some extent on areas where um, any potential improvements that we make could also be utilized uh, by other transit services to improve them as well. Next slide. So then under improved safety, we have provide safe and comfortable pedestrian access to and from stations and provide comfortable bicycle facilities along or parallel, excuse me, parallel to project corridors. So for that first objective, of course, any station that we cite in any of our alternatives has to have a safe and accessible path to it. You can't build um, bus stations in places where folks wouldn't be able to access them. So in all of the alignments that we look at, we'll be looking to see if that safe um, and accessible path to the station could be built. Um, if we can't do that, then we would have to look at um, alternative locations for bus stops um, to see where that could be done. And then for providing comfortable uh, bicycle facilities, when we look at alignments um, or roadways, we will look at the possibility of having bicycle accommodations within that roadway or that alignment, I should say. But there may be instances in which there um, isn't enough room to fit, um, you know, things like protected bike lanes, for instance. If that is the case, then we will be looking at alternatives like parallel corridors to see if they could provide um, safe and comfortable uh, bicycle facilities, uh, because we there may be situations where it's not possible to accommodate it within the same um, infrastructure as transit service. So you can think about the Chelsea busway right now that the SL3 uses, there is a shared use path adjacent to it or parallel to it because um, it wouldn't be safe or comfortable for people on bikes to utilize the busway. So that's why the Chelsea community path is there um, adjacent to it. So we'll be looking at opportunities to provide bicycle accommodations in any alternatives that we look at. And then the last goal area, uh, next slide, is support climate change resilience and sustainability. So in any alternative that we look at, we'll actually be uh, modeling potential ridership to see um, what kind of impact an alternative will have on uh, mode share within the study area. So that's the percent of people who utilize transit, walking, biking, or driving for their trips. And we'll be able to see based on um, the travel demand model, how alternatives perform in um, providing service that, that folks will use. We'll be able to see if some alternatives have really high ridership potential um, versus alternatives that don't. And then the last objective, um, minimize greenhouse gas emissions from trips within the study area. So alternatives that appear to shift more folks from personal automobiles to transit uh, would likely 
uh, reduce the total greenhouse gas emissions um, generated within the study area from transportation um, in general. But that's something that we'll be looking at. As part of our modeling effort, we will be doing an air quality analysis of each of the alternatives to see what kind of impact those would have um, based on both the, the transit service and uh, the total uh, transportation uh, trips in the study area. Next slide. So I talked about our, our overall evaluation framework. The, the goals and objectives really fit within uh, the middle of that where it says tier one evaluation. So right now we are at this uh, first step called screening, which is the very beginning of the process. This is where we essentially look at the entire universe of potential options. And we screen out ones that don't meet our project purpose or need, or are not feasible from an engineering perspective, um, or maybe are not feasible from an environmental permitting perspective. Um, and we have a list of screening questions that we'll use to evaluate any of the alignments that we have identified. And then ones that pass through that screening process will go into this tier one evaluation. And that's where we um, judge each one based on those objectives. This is where we're doing um, different kinds of uh, analysis. Our project team will be doing that, um, looking at each alignment or route that we've identified to see how well they perform. Excuse me. And that's sort of on a segment by segment basis. And you'll see what I mean when we get further in and we start looking at alternatives or excuse me, alignments. So that's looking at a segment by segment basis. And then after we've evaluated each of those segments, then the ones that perform the best in that analysis move into tier two. And that's where we um, stitch together different segments to create full routes. Um, so here's just an example of, of one of those. If you're considering extending the SL3 from where it currently ends in Chelsea to um, Sullivan Square, for instance, there are a lot of different routes that any extension could take. We're looking at all of those options. We judge each one to see how well it performs based on our objectives. And then we take the ones that perform the best or um, make the most sense to put together. And we stitch them together so that we have a full route. And then that full route um, is run through our modeling effort to measure things like potential ridership um, and air quality analysis. Once we've developed a service plan for that route and figured out you know, what the frequency or headways would be, essentially how many buses would be on that route and, and where stations approximately would be located. So that's the general process. And, and as I get into the slides about different alignments, I think that will um, be more clear for folks who are a little confused by that. Next slide. So before we talk about different alignments, I'm gonna turn this over to Teresa Carr from our project team, who's gonna talk about existing conditions. Teresa. Thanks, Doug, and good evening, everyone. Um, as Doug mentioned, my name is Teresa Carr. I'm the consultant project manager for this effort. I'll spend a few minutes now walking through the main highlights from the existing conditions analysis. Next slide. And existing conditions is really as it sounds. What does the system look like today? What do the land uses look like today? This sets the context for the work we have ahead of us. We want to make sure that we aren't ignoring how people are currently using our system when we look at making future investments. And a quick note, we did our analysis largely for February, 2020, an acknowledgement of the major disruption to travel patterns stemming from the COVID pandemic. Next slide. We have five key takeaways. First, our study area and Everett and Chelsea in particular have the demand and the demographics to support a high frequency, high quality transit service. Second, our study area has more transit critical residents than, it, than any of the inner core of the Boston region overall. But there's some variation between the individual communities 
in our study area. Third, Everett residents in particular have less access to regional activity centers than residents in adjacent communities. Four, there are constraints in the form of congestion and right of way that play a role in this lack of access. And fifth, we see great potential for a Silver Line extension and other transit priority investments to help address this gap. Next slide. The next five slides will drill down a little bit on these five key takeaways. And this map shows a combination of population and employment density in our study area in the form of the number of residents and jobs per acre. The darker the color, the greater the density. And the threshold we would look at is 11 people per acre, which is the MBTA service delivery policy standard for frequent all day service. In our study area, we are seeing composite densities far exceeding this threshold with an average population density of 23 people per acre and employment of almost 18 jobs per acre. Next slide. As Doug referenced earlier, advancing equity is a core goal of this study. As such, we have done substantial analysis to understand where transit critical populations, those are people of color, low income, low and zero vehicle households and foreign born populations are located within our study area. The colors on these bar charts are the dark gray are the communities of Everett and Chelsea, light gray is East Boston, Blue is Cambridge, Somerville, and Charlestown, and red is the inner core communities overall. And we can see that minority populations are higher in Everett and Chelsea and East Boston than the rest of the study area and the region. That low income status, AMI stands for area median income is roughly the same across all categories or slight variation. There's slightly higher low income status in Everett and Chelsea. Zero vehicle households are far higher in East Boston than the rest of the area. And we'll get to why this finding is important in a bit. And foreign born populations are higher in Everett and Chelsea than the rest of the study area. Next slide. So these, this slide shows a couple of things. There's two maps here. What can be accessed within a 30, 45 and 60 minute transit trip from Glendale Square and Everett? That's the map on the left. And what can be accessed within a direct transit trip with one transfer and with multiple transfers? That's the map on the right. We did this analysis for a variety of points within our study area. And what we found is that Everett residents have less access to regional activity centers than residents in adjacent communities. In fact, you can see that parts of Cambridge, including Kendall, is a 45 minute transit ride and parts of Cambridge Port or even a 60 minute transit ride and require multiple transfers. Next slide. This map shows daily passenger minutes of delay along key transit corridors with gray being smaller delays and the darker the color going from yellow to orange to dark red, delineating the greater the delay we can see that congestion plays a clear role in both transit travel times and in transit travel time reliability. Next slide. This map shows how a Silver Line extension could potentially help address major gaps in access to opportunity. 
these bar charts here show the number of jobs accessible within a 45 minute drive. That's the gray bar and a 45 minute transit ride. That's the blue bar. And we see this for destinations along the different subway lines, Maverick Square being the blue line, Davis along the red line, Malden Center along the orange line, and Glendale Square. And we can see a very clear, um, we can see a very clear difference in terms of the number of jobs that can be accessed between any of those points along blue, red, and even orange in comparison to Glendale Square in Everett. And the map here shows the variability in access between driving and transit, low to high, where the greens are showing relatively good transit access compared to, to driving access, reds showing better roadway access as compared to transit, and that peach color here, which is a large part of Everett, shows relatively low, low job access by transit and by auto, but most importantly here, lower access by transit than by auto. Next slide. Okay, Doug, back to you. Thanks, Teresa. So I'm sure that the existing conditions um, that we found are not a surprise to, to folks on this call. Um, we wanted to keep that section short so that we could spend more time talking about alignments. And there have been many, many studies prior to this one that have looked at um, transit service within the Chelsea, Everett, Somerville, Cambridge area. Um, the Lower Mystic Regional Working Group report um, is one of the more notable ones more recently. That was released in 2019. And that really was, um, the precursor to this study. So that study recommended um, creating two services, one that would connect uh, folks in Chelsea and Everett to Kendall Square and another that would uh, connect folks to downtown Boston. So we took a look at that study and the analysis that they did and the recommendations included in that sort of informed the, the scope that we wrote to create this study. Um, and it's essentially the lay the groundwork for, for this effort. So we're taking a close look at the recommendations that they made to see um, if we think they're feasible and uh, what the potential benefits of those could be. Um, next slide, please. So I just wanna remind everyone what the evaluation process is like um, and also show you how we've broken up the study area. So you can see this map on the right-hand side um, has labels, sections one, two, three, and four. Um, we've broken up the study area into those different sections for the purposes of looking at different alignments that an extension could utilize. And then once we get deeper into the analysis, we will stitch together those different pieces into full alternatives. So that's sort of what I was getting at earlier when I first showed you um, our evaluation framework and how that would work. Um, we are gonna go through a few slides that walk through alignments that we've identified within each of these sections, and then we'll have breakout rooms that correspond with each of these as well. Next slide. So as I mentioned earlier on in this presentation, um, this stage of the process is really about identifying you know, the whole universe of potential options. When you do an alternatives analysis in transportation planning, you essentially start with um, a really broad look at what's possible and then you um, narrow it down and narrow it down and narrow it down um, using your evaluation criteria until you eventually come to um, one or a couple preferred alternatives is uh, what they're referred to. Um, and that would be essentially the, the alternative that aligns best with the project purpose and need or best meets whatever criteria you've created um, as part of that alternatives analysis. So as I mentioned, we're at that stage really early on where we're identifying that whole universe of 
um, alignments and alternatives. So the routes that you see on these maps that we're going to show um, are not necessarily the only options. We want input from you. Obviously, we're continuing to um, do additional analysis and investigation on our end to make sure that we you know, do identify all of the possibilities and then narrow down the list from there. Um, the alignments that you'll see on these maps have been developed based on conversations with our stakeholders, our existing conditions analysis, and reviews of the studies that preceded this, including the Lower Mystic Regional Working Group Report and the Everett Transit Action Plan, which I mentioned earlier. Um, not all of the alignments that we're gonna show will pass through the screening process. As I mentioned, we start off with sort of the broadest look we possibly can take, and then we narrow it down from there. So some of the alignments that you'll see on these maps, we've already identified as ones that will potentially be screened out uh, for various reasons. And we'll talk about those as we go through them. Um, and then it's important to note that the alignments that we do analyze may be combined in different ways to determine what you know, alternatives could actually look like. For that final stage of the process, um, tier two, we will have five full alternatives that we um, do ridership modeling for, air quality analysis for. Um, so you may see them packaged together in different ways, depending on uh, what we think should be evaluated. And then I also should note that some of the alignments that we identify um, may actually provide several benefits for existing bus routes, but may not ultimately make sense as an extension of the silver line. In those cases, we are gonna be sharing our results with the bus network redesign team um, so that they can incorporate those results into their analysis as they look at reconfiguring um, the whole bus network. So some of these alignments may have um, independent utility, ind independent of um, Silver Line service. And that also allows us, as we get into the final report, to look at things like short-term, medium-term, and long-term recommendations, um, especially as we look at how any alternatives would actually be implemented. That's obviously something that we're gonna have to evaluate later in the process. Um, another thing I should note is that because this is really early on in this process during that initial screening, we haven't done anything like develop service plans. We haven't figured out where bus stops will be located. That's um, really the next stage of this process. So if you have questions about um, any of that as we get into the breakout rooms, uh, we may not have answers to those questions, but that is work that we will be doing as this process unfolds. Um, next slide. So in section one, um, you'll see this map on the right. The solid lines are the routes that were identified by the Lower Mystic Regional Working Group report. That's the acronym you see in that legend there, LMRWG. The dashed lines are other potential alignments that we have identified that we want to take a look at. Um, that may be worth considering. So the Lower Mystic Regional Working Group report um, recommended going from the terminal of the SL3 along the commuter rail right of way up 2nd Street and then onto Route 16 in the Sweetser Circle. Um, and also for the other service, they recommended that um, would come down Broadway to Sweetser Circle and obviously beyond from there, but we've uh, broken this up into just this section. Other routes that we, of course, want to look at um, are continuing along the commuter rail right of way um, or going up to Route 16 or um, potentially using more of 2nd Street. And then even once you get to Route 16, there are um, a couple different ways that you could get into uh, or get over to Broadway or the Everett Square area. So we will be evaluating all of these in that screening process. And then when we go into the breakout room, if you breakout rooms, if you have questions about these, 
the breakout room facilitators will be able to, to talk you through these. Uh, next slide. For section two, this would, um, this is the next part of our study area. The Lower Mystic Regional Working Group report uh, recommended uh, going down Broadway into Sullivan. And then of course they recommended going beyond that. Um, there are other alternatives to that, of course, you could potentially continue along the commuter rail right of way and then tie into Broadway, um, or it may make sense in some of our alternatives to look at an extension that goes to Wellington rather than Sullivan. That's something that we um, wanna give consideration to in this process. And really the only way to do that would be to um, utilize parts of Route 16. So you can see that there. There is one alignment on this map that is shown in gray because we have identified um, several concerns about the potential feasibility of it. And that would be continuing along the commuter rail right of way. Um, and then over the Mystic uh, River by the commuter rail bridge and into Sullivan. Um, there would be a lot of complexity to that uh, with the interaction between the orange line and the commuter rail. And there are uh, some concerns that we've identified at this stage about uh, the potential of even being able to permit something like that um, or receive permits from environmental permitting agencies. So that alignment may be screened out because of the issues that we've already identified with it. And you'll see there's a couple alignments on the, the next section um, that have similar concerns. Next slide, please. So this is section three. This is if you've uh, connected to the orange line and you wanna continue on from there to Kendall Square, this map shows the different routes that you could potentially take to do that. So if you connected at Wellington, you could come over the Fellsway Bridge and down Route 28. Uh, potentially these, as I mentioned, these are just um, options that we're, we're considering. We haven't identified the actual viability of implementing transit infrastructure on these yet. That's the next stage of the process. Um, but you could potentially use Route 28. Um, if you had connected at Sullivan, um, you can potentially use Washington Street to Route 28. It's important to note that the Lower Mystic Regional Working Group report recommended um, an alignment that used Inner Belt Road in Somerville and a, um, a pro they proposed a bridge from Inner Belt Road into the North Point area um, to connect over to Leachmere and then uh, First Street to get into Kendall Square. So we are looking at the viability of that alignment. Our team is, is, looking, is looking at what could be built there, what would it take to build something there, um, what would it cost, that sort of thing. We want to identify the feasibility of that alignment before we get further into the process. And then the last option is to go down Rutherford Ave um, and then down to Leachmere uh, to the Museum of Science Bridge and Land Boulevard. Once you get into Kendall, there are several different ways that any potential service could um, circulate through there um, and then get back on the route to, to head north. So we are going to be taking a look at the circulation in Kendall, we haven't identified exactly um, what those alignments would look like in that area. Um, but the only other thing to note about this is there are two routes on here depicted in gray. One is um, a connection through Assembly Row. Essentially, having a service that goes from Wellington to Assembly and then to Sullivan um, would be extremely duplicative of the transit service that exists and um, wouldn't, as far as we can tell, really serve uh, the travel needs of the folks within our study area. Um, so we're representing that in gray as an option or an alignment that will likely be screened out. And then the last one you can see down by Kendall Square is the Grand Junction right of way. So right now the city of Cambridge is pursuing a shared use path adjacent to um, the existing rail tracks along that corridor. Um, so with the need to preserve rail service on that corridor and have a shared use path through there, there 
isn't really enough space to also build a busway. So it is likely that that route would uh, be screened out at the beginning of this process as well. Uh, but we're obviously uh, double checking that and confirming that. Next slide. So this is the last section. This is the orange line to downtown. So as I mentioned before, if you have a service that goes to Sullivan Square and you're trying to get into downtown, you could potentially use Rutherford Ave. Um, if you have a service that has gone to Lechmere, you could potentially continue over the Museum of Science Bridge um, and then either to North Station uh, and then with either option, potentially a Haymarket. Of course, just like with Kendall, we haven't exactly identified what terminals will be included in our alternatives or what the downtown circulation uh, would exactly look like. So the next step of this process after we um, do an initial screen of alignments is to take a closer look at downtown and the Kendall Square area to see what um, terminal and circulation options are available there. So that's a brief overview of each of the sections of our study area. Uh, next slide, please. We are going to go into breakout rooms now and you can then ask the facilitators in these rooms questions or give comments about um, these different sections. They'll have a web-based map open that they can drop comments on. We are we also have a web-based map available to members of the public to make comments on. It is an amalgamation of all the maps that I just walked through. Um, we will post a link to that map in the breakout rooms so that folks can go to that map and leave their own comments on it if you don't want to um, you know, dictate a comment to the breakout room facilitator uh, to do it th themselves. So the first breakout room is gonna cover sections one and two, that's Chelsea and Everett, and then connections to the orange line. The second breakout room will be connections from the orange line to Kendall Square. The third breakout room will be the orange line um, to downtown. And then the fourth breakout room will be in Spanish. For folks who are listening to Spanish interpretation right now, it will cover all four sections um, of the study area. And I think with that, we are ready to go to breakout rooms. Reagan, can you confirm? Yeah, actually, Shana, can you go to the next slide, please? Oh, yes, thank you. So all attendees will be able to select the breakout room uh, they wish to join, and you will be able to move freely with uh, between breakout rooms. Um, we're going to be in discussion for probably between 20 and 30 minutes, we will send a, a message about the, the amount of time in the breakout rooms, depending upon how uh, at the beginning of the breakout rooms. Um, but you can stay in one breakout room in one section for the whole time we are there, or you can uh, visit multiple rooms in the time allotted. Um, I am about to um, open the breakout rooms. I will note that if you have any difficulty uh, joining a breakout room or when you leave one, um, you can always uh, put something in the chat and or call for help and someone will assist you. So I'm actually thinking that we're gonna do um, 20 minutes. So let's actually, we'll plan to reconvene to do the rest of the agenda at 725 then, and we will message in the rooms um, a countdown as we are waiting. So I am going to open the rooms now. And again, if you have any difficulty joining a breakout room, please just message us in the chat. So opening rooms now. Emily, can you pause recording and can we pause the live stream, Kevin? Can you resume the live stream? Doug, it's all yours. Thank you, Reagan. 
Um, thank you all very much for participating in the breakout rooms. I hope that you're, um, you were able to, to make comments um, and ask questions of the facilitators. Um, before we get into a Q&A for this meeting, um, I want to talk about next steps and where we go from here. Next slide, please. So I neglected to mention this earlier in the presentation, but we have an online feedback form available in English and Spanish um, to get feedback on our goals and objectives. Those links to those are available on the project website, which is mbta.com slash SLX. Please go to the project website and participate in those um, online feedback forms. We really appreciate your input. You can also provide input on potential alignments and you saw these maps in the breakout rooms um, and you will now have a link to them as well, but you can go to the project website and find the link to our web-based map where you can leave comments or ask questions um, about different alignments. So between now and the next public meeting, um, we will finalize our goals, objectives and the metrics that we've developed for evaluating them. And then we will go through the screening process of potential alignments um, and then start analyzing the alignments that pass through that screening process um, against our goals and objectives. That's when we'll come back to you to talk about the results of that process um, before we get into the final stages. Next slide. And just to remind everyone of our project schedule, um, that next public meeting is going to be sometime in the late summer or early fall. Um, we'll be doing, between now and then, we'll be doing our, our alternatives analysis. We'll also be meeting with our external stakeholder working group. Um, that stakeholder working group, those meetings are open to the public. They are advertised on mbta.com on the project website and the recordings of those meetings are posted on the project website afterwards for folks who are interested in watching it. So if you've signed up for project emails, um, you will find out about those and you will be able to provide input throughout the course of this project. You can also email the project website, I believe, or excuse me, the project email address, which I believe we'll have on a subsequent slide. Um, next slide, please. Before, it's actually on the last slide of the slide deck, um, but it's slx at mbta.com. So if you stick around, you'll see that, but you can also access that through the project website as well. So there's lots of ways to get in touch with us, to give us your, uh, your feedback. We welcome your comments on our online feedback form and on our web app, and we'll do our best to answer any questions that have come up over the course of this meeting in the next 15 minutes. We have a hard stop at 745, um, but between now and then we'll answer as many questions as we uh, possibly can. So I will, uh, turn it over to um, Reagan, I believe, to yes. help facilitate. Thank you. Sure. So I just wanted to take a moment to talk. Uh, we were paying attention to the chat and were able to um, capture some of the questions. I know, Doug, there was a question about um, Malden's involvement in stakeholder engagement as Malden is uh, was shown uh, on the area map. Can you? Medford, I believe. That? Um, oh, Medford, sorry. Yes, no problem. Can't read my own handwriting. Um, so yes, someone noted uh, the city of Medford was not listed as a member of the stakeholder working group, but Wellington is within our study area. Um, we will be reaching out to staff from the city of Medford to talk about um, the alignment that we've identified uh, to and from Wellington and any potential alternatives that may incorporate Wellington. Um, the early versions of our study area um, were sort of bounded by the recommendation of the Lower Mystic Regional Working Group report. And at, that, at the time of us um, drafting that early study area, we had identified Chelsea, um, Everett, Somerville, Cambridge, and Boston as our primary stakeholders for um, engagement in any potential alignments or alternatives that we would look at. Um, it was sort of later on in that in that process since we, we started the study where we realized that Wellington needed to be incorporated as well. So we will be reaching out to staff from the city of Medford to talk to them about um, any 
potential alignments or alternatives that um, would impact uh, the city of Medford. Thanks, Doug. Um, and um, Shana, if you can go to the next slide, one thing I will note is that we will, um, we will be posting both uh, the list of the working group members and the presentation on the website shortly. And I see Emily's doing a great job in the chat sharing all of the links. So I think at this point, I would invite any elected officials who are in attendance if you wanna make comments, if you'd like to raise your hand. Um, for members of the public, I'll just ask you to hold a few more minutes to see if we have any elected officials who wish to make comments. Okay, so seeing none, um, I will encourage you to, um, if you would like to make a comment, you can place it in the chat or you can uh, press the raise hand button to share your question or comment verbally. Um, please wait until I recognize you before you're speaking. If you are joining by phone only, um, you can do this by uh, raising, you can raise your hand by pressing the star button and then the number nine. After you speak, we're gonna lower your hand and then you will be muted again to allow the team um, time to respond and provide, other, uh, provide others opportunities to participate. So um, I do see a question in the chat as we wait for others to raise their hand. Um, Doug, about um, if we can do some outreach to Charlestown um, as part of our public outreach. Uh, great question. If to the, the person who um, put in that comment, if you email the project email address with your request, um, we'll be sure to um, respond and address it. So we can see if um, we can accommodate your request. Great. Does anyone have any other questions? I'm not seeing anything in the chat. Um, people, oh yes, I do. I'm sorry. Uh, Wig had uh, some questions asking about projected ridership numbers and the projected fuel for this project. So uh, projected ridership is something that will be identified after we've identified or defined alternatives. So we can't model ridership of any potential service until we know what that service looks like um, and where it would go. So the, the purpose of this study is to identify what that service could potentially be and where it would go. And then once we've done that part of the analysis, we'll be able to model ridership. Um, for the question about the projected fuel, I believe you mean for the vehicles um, that would be using any alternative that we recommend. Um, we are working with the MBTA bus um, maintenance facility modernization program and a team working on fleet procurement to figure out what assumptions we should make about the future conditions that would be incorporated into our analysis. So we'll be receiving direction from them on what that fleet would look like um, in the future condition for the purposes of our um, analysis for things like um, transit travel time, capacity of vehicles, um, air quality emissions, um, stuff like that. So we'll get direction later on in this process as we have more conversations with those teams about their processes and what the future is going to look like. Thanks, Doug. Um, it looks like Jay Monty. Jay, you have your hand raised. Emily, can you unmute Jay? Jay, you should be able to speak. Yeah, uh, yeah sure. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, Jay Monte, I'm the uh, Director of Transportation Planning for the City of Everett. Um, Mayor DiMaria uh, sends his regrets. He couldn't be here tonight. His daughter uh, was turning 12 years old tonight and they have a little birthday party for her. Um, but I just wanted to emphasize really, um, first, thank you to the project team. Thank you, MassDOT, MBTA. Um, this, this is really a critical project for the City of Everett. Um, as Doug pointed out, um, you know, we're having just unprecedented development in the city. Um, that's a good thing. Um, and not just, you know, the casino, we're building a lot of housing, we're building a lot of other um, important uh, projects that are, are really contributing to um, our region-wide goals of, of um, you know, housing affordability, equitability, um, you know, jobs, um, things of that nature. Um, and, and yet we're, we're today very underserved by transit. So um, this is a critical project to us. I just actually saw the comment here, um, you know, about what, Hub and spoke versus you know uh, connection between um, sort of the, the, the urban ring, if you will. 
I think one of the great things that we're doing here is we're kind of doing a look at both. Um, it is important to Everett that we get not only a connection into Boston, but also a connection over in, into uh, Somerville and Cambridge, um, because you know we, we want to be able to connect our residents um, to not only the job centers downtown, but the job centers in South Boston, in Cambridge, um, and Somerville. So um, we're really excited by all of this, um, and we just want to send our thanks to the project team, and uh, we're excited to continue to work with the, all of you um, to make this a success. Thanks, Jay. Yeah. So, Doug, uh, there's a few questions in the chat. One is um, a question about an alignment question from Douglas. Um, if the Broadway Everett is a different line than the Chelsea Sweetser line, could they have different terminals on the other end, with perhaps one going to Cambridge and one going to Boston? That is a great question. Um, as we get into developing our alternatives, um, it's possible that we will consider things like, and this is hypothetical, um, an extension of the SL3 to one terminal and then improvements for existing bus service along um, a different route, similar to what the Lower Mystic Regional Working Group report recommended. Um, when we look at alternatives, they will be sort of packages of changes to transit service, um, so that we can evaluate uh, the benefits of those. Um, as I mentioned earlier on in the presentation, there may be ways to achieve our project goals by making changes to existing transit services independently of doing anything with the Silver Line. So we wanna make sure that our alternatives um, incorporate you know, the, a suite of improvements to, that would potentially achieve our goals. So it is possible that there will be alternatives that look at um, different terminals for different services. So there is a question from David in the chat um, on the goals and objectives about the consideration of adopting a goal of enhancing direct transit mobility between inner ring communities rather than only between inner ring and the core in the hub and spoke model. That is a, a good question as well. Um, I think the way that we've identified the goals, um, we, and the, the analysis that we've done of existing travel patterns um, sort of do push us to look at different kinds of connections, whether they're to the inner core or to um, other links like, you know, Sullivan or Wellington or Kendall Square, which aren't necessarily, um, core in the sense that downtown Boston is. So we are really this whole study is about identifying or addressing the gap in transit service in Chelsea and Everett, um, looking at the destinations that residents of those communities are currently traveling to, as well as the destinations that they lack good transit access to, um, and looking at ways that we can improve their existing connections and um, potentially make new connections that don't currently exist. So I think all of that supports um, looking at improvements to transit to get people you know, where they need to go or where they would like to go, uh, which may not necessarily mean the downtown core. So I think we're down to the last two questions of the night. So I will uh, do the first one from Jay, um, who's asking about um, the redesign of the bridge roadway lane markings to create a bus lane, such as on Offord Street Bridge, um, would they require Coast Guard approval? Um, that is a question that I do not have an answer to at this time. I will have to check with other members of the project team um, to weigh in on that so we can um, get an answer to that question. Yeah. And I said there was only two, but I think there's going to be two more. So um, I think the, the this one is, I think, a little bit more of a comment, but many of these alternatives are duplicating existing service, such as Broadway and the Orange Line. Should we instead increase service on those lines and have SLX enhance the network? That's a great question and something that we are certainly looking at as part of this process. Um, as I mentioned there, 
maybe many improvements that we can make to existing services independently of anything happening with the silver line. Um, the bus network redesign process is going to be really integral in that. And as I mentioned, we are coordinating closely with that effort, um, sharing our findings and our recommendations with them and vice versa so that if there are things that we can identify that will improve existing transit service without needing to do something like extending the silver line, um, we want to make sure that we identify those recommendations and, and have them in our report documented. Thanks. So I think um, I see that Brad Rawson from the city of Somerville wants to make a comment. Emily, can you unmute Brad? And when Brad is done speaking, I think Doug, we can wrap things up because I know we have to have a hard stop at 745. So. Sure, I will um, really quickly, I will say a member of the project team messaged me to say that they, they do not think that Coast Guard approval would be necessary um, for lane marking changes on uh, bridges over waterways that the Coast Guard is more concerned about um, the water passage underneath and not as much about uh, what the lane markings on the roadway look like. But we'll of course uh, make sure we double check that to, um, and in all of our alternatives, we'll be looking at, you know, permitting process, regulatory hurdles, all those sorts of things. And Emily, can you unmute Brad? I think I'm Brad, you should be, should be able to unmute yourself. Excellent, can you hear me Reagan? Yes, thanks, Brad. Thanks so much. Good evening, everybody. My name is Brad Ross, and I serve the city of Somerville as director of mobility in Mayor Joe Curtitoni's office. Uh, like Jay said, folks, nice job. Thank you, Doug. Thank you, Reagan. Thank you, Teresa, an entire team. And thanks to all of our residents, activists, and volunteers for being here tonight. I would like to encourage us all to spend some of our prep time and our homework assignments wisely. Two quick things. Doug, you mentioned a bunch of the great land use planning and transportation studies that are part of this project's family tree, the Everett Action uh, Transit Action Plan, the Lower Mystic Working Group, Kendall Square Action Plan. There are so many, um, and there's so much important information coming from them. Folks who are interested in this stuff can find really important information to inform the work that we do together over the next year. The second thing that I would call on you all to do is to think about the fact that just like the Green Line extension in Somerville has taken 20 or even 30 years to reach maturity and credit to everybody who has their fingerprints on that project, Silver Line could take a while, but we don't have to wait another generation for mass transit upgrades. The work that we have all been doing together with on-street bus lanes on municipal streets and increasingly on state highways delivers many of the proofs of concepts of transit equity, of environmental sustainability, and economic competitiveness that I think you all are calling on us to deliver as your public servants. So when Everett, when Chelsea, when the city of Boston, the city of Malden, the city of Somerville are delivering on-street bus, uh, bus transit solutions, please know how controversial these things can be, and please know how important your voice is in making sure that we have the, the running room and the impetus to continue delivering this work because it can fold into useful and reliable alignments for a future silver line or other bus rapid transit solutions all over the region. So I wanna make sure that folks don't just think this is a pie in the sky, decade long dream. We can change our communities today with a few buckets of paint, a few cones and a little political courage. So thanks everybody. Let's keep up the great work together. Thank you very much, Brad, appreciate it. Do we have any other questions from the public? No, it looks like that's it. Um, I think, uh, Shana, if you can go to the next slide. Um, thank you all very much for joining us. If your questions were not answered in this meeting, if you would like to give us more feedback, please feel free to email us at the project uh, email address, slx at mbta.com. Also, please go to the project website, mbta.com slash slx. Give us feedback using the online feedback forms. Um, and please post questions and comments on the web-based map. We will incorporate all of the feedback and the comments that we get into this process as we move forward. So we appreciate your participation and we look forward to continuing to work with you. Uh, thank you all for joining us tonight. And with that, I think we will adjourn the meeting. Have a good night, everyone. <laughs>